So just a uh, quick talk about uh, the Tech 53 brakes um, and that uh, interference that I was trying to chase down. So basically um, what it came down to was I had the caliper, I, did, I wasn't careful when I mounted the caliper to leave a, a, a gap, um, a full gap I'll show you here. This, this gap here between the top of the rotor and the inside of the caliper. Uh, there's some variability when you mount the caliper. You can move it 20 or 30 thou. And because these are huge pistons in this, the calipers are, are you know, they're as large as they have to be to fit these large um, 1 and 5 eighths inch diameter pistons in them. It makes them a little bulky. It makes them a little difficult. So to fit a 14 by 6 inch snowflake wheel, an OEM wheel, there's a bunch of compromises in the tolerance that are necessary and one of them is that you have to be pretty close so uh, I'm gonna go racing I'm gonna put a thousand degrees worth of temperature into these uh, rotors which is what racing pads will operate to up to and uh, you get a fair amount of thermal expansion when you do that so I machine the rotors down at 50 thou you can see there's a huge gap there now I didn't need to do that but I figured I'm gonna machine them at all I might as well take 50 thou off uh, if you look on this side um, there's still, um, you know, the, the, the pads are still biting below the, um, uh, the chamfer point. So, I mean, I'm not losing any pad area by doing that, uh, but it gives me, gives me lots of additional clearance. So I solved the clearancing problem just by moving the caliper around as per Fred's advice at Tech 53, but I figured, you know, why not just go one step further and, uh, and make them, uh, Apple clearance, so they're a 10 inch rotor now instead of a 10.1 and as I said it makes no difference in the clamping force because the pads are are, uh, are, are, are not being compromised in their contact area. So I'm just throwing it back together and uh, it's Friday, looks like the weather should be good by Sunday for, for a test drive. So what I'm doing here, the driver's seat out, and I've got one of my two spare seat bottoms I'm going to cut up and weld up to make the base for the Sparco racing seats and um, I was just checking to see how firm these things hold in place and they're really firm I'm moving the camera but if I could put it on a tripod you'd see that this thing was not moving at all um, I realize that the Teflon or the plastic liners for the sliders on each side are different thicknesses, I think. So I'd put two of the outside ones on these seats, I think, instead of an outside and an inside one. The uh, outside ones are thicker than the inside ones, and the outside ones, the inside ones don't fit on the outside, so. I'm thinking that maybe I may pull this seat out and have a look at it because it's uh, it's in a little it wobbles a bit more than this one, so I may have discovered something fiddling with the Sparco seat to design things. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to start cutting this up. I want to get the seat at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half lower than the stock seats because um, these seats sit up too high and. Uh, I may even put a little elbow on the top of the shifter because when you're really sucked back into the racing seat with the harnesses on you, it's, it's tough to reach forward and that shifter's slightly further forward than I'd like it to be, so I may come up with some kind of a, a little uh, extender that takes it back two inches, so we'll see. We'll see I'm starting to fiddle here. Okay, here's the first mock-up of the Sparco seat. And um, yeah, you can, let me just come around to the side. I've got it sitting on some blocks of wood. I'm just doing some quick test fitting, uh, sitting in the car, having a, a feel. So for me, to be close enough to the pedals and the steering wheel, the seat is actually forward of the, uh, the pillar here. And um, I'm not exactly sure what slope I want it. I pr probably that will be fine. Um, Got to be pretty much slammed. 
So it's lower. Um, I mean, it drops down way deeper, as you can see, than the, the stock seat. You're probably two inches deeper at the back, and at the very front lip, you're maybe an inch lower, or or a little less, but uh, where your ass sits, you're, you're a couple of inches lower, which is where I want it. And yes, I do want to have an L on that shifter. I want to bring it back about two and a half inches. Maybe a little awkward, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to build a little... Uh, plate and uh, assembly. Um, yeah, this thing basically has to be slammed, so it's uh, it's going to be, I don't know if you can see there, but the, the rail on the far side is touching the carpet, so I'm going to have to build this thing so that it's uh, right at uh, carpet level on that one side, and then uh, it'll have to be lifted up on this side because it drops down. I don't have it quite, quite level, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, so, yeah, the beginning of fabricating. What's nice about having it forward like this is that I'll be able to put the bars. Uh, well, we'll see. I don't want to have the, the, the crossbar for this, the, uh, the shoulder belts. I don't want the crossbar to be too far behind. We'll uh, have to work that. Because to get in and out, i got to slide the seat back to be able to get out of the car because it's just uh, insanely... Uh, tough to get your ass out of those deep bucket seats so uh, especially with the steering wheel there you gotta kind of pull yourself out of it well I've got the front end back together got new uh, control arm um, ball joint uh, hardware installed and torqued to the 18 foot-pound spec and uh, yeah it's, it's all together now and um, just going for a little drive I'm pretty happy with how, uh, how it's feeling just the first few minutes of driving and it's not quite warmed up yet, but uh, it's beautiful weather here. I thought I'd have to wait till Monday, but it's Saturday and it's sunny. And uh, yeah, the brakes are starting to break in a little bit, starting to feel a little bit better. set in quite a bit before I start hammering on them too much. And the bedding procedure is several sort of moderate stops from under 40 miles an hour to maybe 15 miles an hour like this. Do like 10 or 15 of them, let it cool down, do it a few more times a little more aggressively from higher speed. I like how they feel. I'm getting the right amount of sort of pedal travel that I need for my uh, heel and towing, I think. Um, although I'm completely rusty and out of uh, shape on all that. The buses pull out like this because they don't want to run too close to the parked cars. They got a new rule in Vancouver where uh, they're allowed to take two lanes. And uh, I used to bitch like crazy about it and say, stupid idea. But uh, supposedly they, they take people's doors off occasionally and uh, they want the space. It's interesting as you bed them in, it, they obviously the coefficient of friction goes way up. They uh, they start to they start to work properly after after they've set it. I have a question for my uh, channel subscribers, and that is with the O2O transmission. Which was used Mark One through Mark Three. How 
much resistance is there for people going into first gear. I've got two, three, four, five, just slots in beautifully. First, I have to kind of push it in a little bit. It's like it resists that initial um, effort to get it in. And I was reading that, oh, if you put it in second and then go into first, it'll be easier, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. I've got a little bit of uh, resistance. And I don't think it's related to the shifter linkage, maybe, but my gut is that if it slots into two nicely, then one should be in line with two and it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue so anyway that's something that I'm I can certainly live with I'm not in first gear very often and I don't know if you shift into it you know on any of the road courses that's insane but uh, um, it's certainly something I'd, uh, I'd love to have a little less effort going into first gear if anybody has any ideas or comments I'd be happy to uh, So this is a road where I can do some more stops without people fucking the shit out of me. fuel pump is starting to make noise it's like a rattle or it's sort of a bit of a whine so far my fuel pressure looks really good but um Yeah, they're good. 
the end of my bedding exercise. So, yeah, if I li let you listen to my fuel pump here. I'll just turn it on. You can put the camera outside so you can... Here, ready, set, go. Something's fucked. Anyway, looks like I'll have to change that. Um, another thing, so, yeah, the brakes are working super well. Love these Tech 53s. Um, I'm definitely going to be able to back off the uh, proportioning valve for the rear and get some more pressure to the rears because, uh, uh, you know, these things were warmed up quite hot, probably to six or seven hundred degrees when I was doing a bunch of panic stops, and the rears are barely getting warm, so I think it's time to start experimenting with adding rear pressure. Um, I'm getting a tiny bit of a mark on the uh, edges here because when I'm aggressively cornering, and I, I, by the way, I didn't have the wheel lugs torqued down fully, um, bad for me, but um, you know they weren't finger tight, but they weren't really cranked on tight, and um, it's getting a bit of wheel flex, but there's probably only a millimeter gap, so I'm going to take off these three millimeter ones and put these five millimeter ones on here, so they're a little bit thicker and uh, it'll just move the wheel out two millimeter and give me just a bit more space. It should, be, should look fine. I don't think I've got uh, the, the wheel too far out of the body as it is, so five millimeter offset's not going to kill, kill me, I think. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm, um, this thing's dialed. So these are the Sparkle um, harness I'm going to use um, with the cam lock. Um, I didn't want it. Sparkle only has a dual um, anti-submarine crotch strap and the way this particular seat works it wouldn't make a difference whether it's one or two because it's got a single slot and a single hole in the bottom and um, so I'm pretty sure that this cam mechanism is compatible with the um, Simpsons cam lock so I ordered a Simpson single um, anti-submarine belt and we'll see if it works or not. I'm sure I can jury rig it to make it work. So um, I think they're going to be good. I'll have to just uh, get the bars for the car set up so the seat belts are at the right angle and all that.